colors. Today I'm going to be talking about this Golden Flame by Emily Victoria. Change your fate, pay the price. So you'll probably remember um, this from one of my Literary Crate openings. This, I think, is the latest one. So I feel very excited that I got to it. And I was just checking my um, TBR cart and this is it for uh, all of my Litjoy Crate books. I have officially caught up with my Litjoy Crates until the next one comes in, which will not be until, I think, summer. So, kind of exciting. Um, this was the book that I absolutely adored its design. This has one of the best book designs I have ever seen. I, I love everything about it everything about it this is a standalone fantasy book um and hmm, what to say about it uh the book follows the main character karis uh, and she lives in a world that's kind of um i would say like greece inspired like all the designs and stuff seem like um ancient greece like the clothing and everything um, so I'm going to say it's probably ancient Greece inspired, but again, this is fantasy, so it also diverges from Greece. It is not Greece, but it just has that, that vibe. Um, and so it follows the main character, Karis, and Karis is currently um, an acolyte who is serving under the scriptorium. I hope I'm saying that right. Um, and they're the scholarly force in this country, and they are researching a way to bring life back to the automatons. And the automatons were these giant humanoid creations, the robots, um, that the leaders used to be able to use in order to control the people. And so the main power of the country wants to get that ability back so that they can dominate everything and uh, take over other lands and become the main rulers. And that's essentially the people that she's being forced to be with. Meanwhile, Karis isn't so much interested in that. Karis would like to find her brother. The two of them were divided, uh, I don't remember how many years ago, but when they were younger. Um, I'm trying to remember if they got into a little bit of trouble and her brother ended up being taken away to this other um, section and Karis was sent to the scriptorium. So they've been separated um, in what their tasks are. And Karis wants to find out where he was sent and also find a way to get him, get back to him, to reunite. Um, and so she's been trying to break into the Hall of Records and try to find out what's going on. Uh, meanwhile, in her daily tasks with the scriptorium and kind of on her own adventuring, I, I don't remember. Anyway, she stumbles upon this automaton that is different from the others. He's more humanoid. Um, and she somehow brings him to life. She activates him. And when he reactivates, she realizes he really is much closer to a human. He, the way that he thinks and perceives things and feels, feels things is much closer to a human. And she wants to protect the things that he knows from the scriptorium so that they don't do the whole thing with the automatons um, but they also want to learn more about him and um, what truths he might hold um, and he does have a name as well his name is Alex uh, so <laughs> she decides to travel with Alex the automaton in order to find her brother they are stopped by Karis's friend Dane who I believe he's in kind of a program to become um, Part of the elite soldiers or something. I, I don't really remember Dane's origin. I'm sorry, Dane. I just remember that you were Karis's friend and you were on like an important path and Karis felt bad that she was going to pull you away from it. But anyway, they get stopped by him and he's like, no, I want to join you because you're my best friend. So <laughs> the three of them journey forth into the real land to try to find Karis's brother, Matthias, but also to try to find um, these kind of secrets that Alex has locked up in him and a way to kind of stop the ruling class from reactivating the automatons and 
actually wreaking havoc on the rest of the world. So that's their main, their main goal. And as they set out, they are captured by pirates and we meet the pirate Zara and, uh, they decide after a little scuffle that they're all kind of on the same side and they're going to work together and so they also suddenly have a ship that they can travel on to get away and find Matthias and that's the journey. They are they're going to do all of these things and you'll just see a lot of like the interactions in the characters, um, a lot of dealing with the question of what is a human and what makes people human. Um, they're are a lot of relationship stuff going on. Um, there's a lot of representation in this book, um, a part of which I don't want to give all away because I feel like I would ruin some of the story and I don't want to spoil that, but um, yeah, this is this is a good read. Um, I thought for being as, as uh, short as it is, <laughs> as concise, I don't really want to say short, a lot of story gets told in here. Um, and again, I, I love a good standalone. I love when I don't have to worry that this is going to keep going on uh, book after book after book. Uh, it wraps up pretty nicely. Yes, there's other side stories that might be able to be told at the end, but I think that you finish it thinking, okay, that's good enough. It was a good book. Um, I don't have to live in that world for, you know, 10 years. I like a good series too. But every once in a while, a nice standalone that I can get done with in like a day and move on with my life is very, very much appreciated. And I feel like a lot of times, especially with fantasy, we don't get enough of that. Um, we need just a little bit more standalones. And I really enjoy standalones. They don't have to be short standalones either. They can be long standalones. I really liked the Priory of Orange Tree. And this is they're going YA. So like that was adults. This is YA. But a good standalone is a good standalone. And I thought this was a good standalone. Um, I think for me, this is like maybe 3.5. It's not as high as like a four star or five star read, but it was enjoyable. I liked it. I liked the characters. I liked questioning humanity and what makes something a human and, you know, is artificial intelligence possible? And I don't know. I like questioning that. I think it's interesting. Um, I I hope that like my phone doesn't have intelligence or emotions because I would feel bad. Like <laughs> if you drop your phone or you let the charge die out, like does that hurt it? I don't want to think about that. Um, but if it's a humanoid creation and we are creating it in such a way that it might have emotions, like it's just interesting to then think what would then make it be classified as a human. I could just get lost in thought thinking about that, so I'm not going to. But it is interesting. This is a very interesting question, and I like that this sort of addresses it. It doesn't answer necessarily, um, but it's just that getting you to think about it. I really enjoyed that. Also, just from what I've described, you might be able to tell that there's, there's like kind of a science fiction element in there too with the whole creation of automatons, but it's definitely more in the fantasy realm. Um, I don't know. It's just, it's enjoyable. <sighs> I did like it. And of course, before I go, I will just show one more time the lovely inside cover where you can see our main four that I talked about, Dane and uh, Karis and Zara and Alex. I wanted to make sure I got the order right. I was almost going to say that like Zara was there because I couldn't see from this side. <laughs> but it's Dane and Karis and then Zara and then Alex. <sighs> That's enjoyable. I still love this book design. This is such a good book design. Well done designers. And I still love the fact that the um, the paper of this is like a newsprint and I love that for some reason. It's just the, the texture of it feels different but very nice. Very nice. I like it. That is it for this video. Until next time. Bye.